Yeah, yeah bro, start up. It's important. Shalom. Right? First off, I'd like to give it all praise, honor, and glory to Yahweh. Uh, well, uh, Shem, Yahweh, Yahweh Shah, 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 Secondly, double honors to the apostles of Great Millstone with the Hebrew Israelites. And we're out here week in and week out prophesying the downfall of this wicked, sinful kingdom known as America. All right? Which is biblically known as Babylon the Great, according to the scriptures. All right? And we're out here to tell you, the Israelites, you so called Negroes, Latinos, Native Americans, and the, and the people that descend from them, that you got to wake up, man. Because the Lord is coming back. All right? The Lord is coming back for his people, man. And guess what? That's you. You're the Lord's people. Right? So you need to wake up, man. There's a lot of things going on in the world, man. If you look at the current events. All right? There's a lot of things going on. And, you know, our people, the Israelites, you, you out here, you know, shucking and jiving, man. Everything's a joke to you. Meanwhile, the so-called white man, who's known as Esau, all right? According to the scriptures, he's out here making moves, man. Trying to supplant him. All right? So bring out our men. Yeah, bring out whatever you got. Bring out right. This is First Peter 5 and 8. Be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary, the devil, as a roaring lion, walketh about seeking who he may devour. Exactly, man. All right? I said be sober, man. Be sober. What it means to be sober, man? To be sober, it means to be in your right mind, in your natural state of mind, all right? And it, and it could mean sober from, you know, things like alcohol, all right, drugs, but at the same time, your mindset, man, what you believe in, the philosophies that you believe in, man. If you believe in that America's gonna go on forever, you drunk, man. You drunk off the wine of the so-called white man. So I say, I said, be sober, knowing what times you live in, man. We're living in the time of the end. And the next kingdom to come is going to be the kingdom of the Israelites, man. It's that simple. So I said, be sober and be vigilant. Why do we need to be vigilant? Because we need to be looking, man. We need to be looking at these prophecies. We need to be looking at these current events. Why? Because we, we got next, man. We're the next ones to rule. So every step closer this place goes to being destroyed is one step closer for our people to be the rulers of the world again, man. But the Yahweh Ba Shem Yahweh Shai, man. So it said, be sober, be vigilant. Yep. Again. This is First Peter 5 and 8. Be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary, the devil, as a roaring lion, walketh about seeking whom he may devour. Exactly, man. Your adversary, your enemy, the devil, the deceiver. Who's that, man? The so-called white man. Who's the who's the um the physical counterpart of the spiritual demon Satan, man? He's out here. He's seeking who he may devour, man. And how can he devour you? He can devour you by making you think that America's gonna continue. He can devour you through his philosophies, man. Believing in the so-called white Jesus, man. He can devour you by being sucked into his whole financial system and his entire way of living and being, man. He's looking. But what do you need to do? You need to stay sober. That's why I said to be sober. Because a so-called white man is looking to completely catch you off guard, man. Yeah. Right? You know, ultimately, how he's going to devour you too, man, is by what? Man, they in that, that mark, man, which is the shit. Right. All right? Because you know if you take that mark, you know, this at least a fire and brimstone, man. You're being destroyed by fire and brimstone, man. You know, that's how the, you know, the devil is trying to no, people in, man. That's right. That's right. Yeah. Um, this is Romans 8. I'm um, start from verse 5. It says, For they that are after the flesh do mind the things of the flesh, but they that are after the spirit, the things of the spirit. All right? So if you out here looking for things of the flesh, man, trying to see how you're going to make it in this world, trying to become the next Bill Gates, trying to become the next Elon Musk, Guess what, man? You carnal. You're doing the things of the flesh. But the men over here, doing the things of the spirit, man. We're trying to reap in those benefits that come from dedicating yourself to things of the spirit, man. Verse, oh, same one? Oh, yes. Romans 8 and on verse 5. <clears throat> For they that are after the flesh do mind the things of the flesh, but they that are after the spirit do the things of the spirit. Right. Verse 6. For to be carnal minded is death. All right, so to be carnally minded, to be thinking about becoming the next Bill Gates, or becoming the next 
greatest basketball players to, that's carnally minded, that, that's going to lead you to death. Why? Because the scriptures tell you that this kingdom is on borrowed time, man. This kingdom is going to ultimately be destroyed by Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai. All right? Everything in this place is going to get burnt up. Everything. With fervent heat. Get that, you know, you got first Peter's pay 10, or second Peter's pay 10. But to be spiritually minded is life and peace. Exactly, man. To be spiritually minded is life and peace. To be spiritually minded is life. Because through the scriptures, through the commandments, ultimately, man. Through, through the commandments, man. Through the commandments. We live in peace, man, because we know. Through the scriptures, through the prophecies, we know what's going to happen. We know what's to come. And we know what we're sacrificing, what we're sacrificing is for, man. I got something for oh, Real quick, this is on Matthew 25 and 13. Watch therefore, sorry, sorry. Watch therefore, you now and know neither the day nor the hour wherein the Son of Man cometh. Yes. Con, can you actually read that again for the show? Right, um, Matthew 25 and 13. Watch and therefore, for you know neither the day nor the hour wherein the Son of Man cometh. Exactly, man. It says to watch. It says to watch because we don't know when the Lord's going to come back. But we don't want the Lord to catch us slipping, man. You don't want to get caught slipping when the Lord comes back. Because according to the scriptures, when the Lord comes back, He's coming back with sword, man. He's coming back with judgment. He's coming back with fire and brimstone, man. So we don't want to be on the receiving end of that, man. So it said to watch because you don't know the day or the hour. We don't know it. So what do we got to do? We got to we gotta live in it. We got to make it part of our life. It's not something that you do only here when you come. All right? It's not something that you do when you feel like it. It's a lifestyle. And that's how it needs to be if you're trying to really be saved, if you're trying to really be in the spirit, man, and reap the benefits of being in the spirit. Back in Romans 8, uh, verse uh, uh, 7. Because the carnal mind is enmity against the power, for it is not subject to the law of the power, neither indeed can be. So then they that are in the flesh cannot please the power. Exactly, man. To be carnally minded is enmity with Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai, man. It's adverse to the ways of Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai, man, because what does the world tell you? The world tells you that there is no God, man. The world tells you that money is your God. Yeah. The world tells you that a woman is your God. Yeah. All right? The world tells you that homosexuality is okay. Yeah. The world tells you that running up in another man's wife is the cool thing to do. So those things cannot be covered by Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai because Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai doesn't deal with that. That's why I said to be carnally minded is enmity with Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai, man. Because the ways of this world are not the way of the Lord, man. In fact, the, the Lord told you that if you want to follow Him, you need to let go of the world, man. Can you read that again? There was a lot more. That's okay. Yeah, man. This world is wicked. This world is wicked, man. No, it was on um, um, 8. Oh, and I'm on uh, verse 8. Go back in Romans uh, chapter 8, uh, verse 8. It says, So then they that are in the flesh cannot please the power, but ye are not in the flesh, but in the spirit. If so be that the spirit of the power dwell in you, now if any man have not the spirit of Yahweh Shai, he is none of his. Exactly, man. So ultimately, if you're not in the vibration of Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai, but you are in the vibration of the world, guess what? You're going to die, man. You're going to die with this place. You're going to die with the society. You're going to die with this kingdom. But if you are with Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai, all right, all you have to do is continue to stay on the path, man, and you're going to inherit the world. And that's why we out here, man, because we up here are trying to inherit the world, man. We're trying to inherit our kingdom, all right? Yeah. So, um, 2 Corinthians uh, 4 and 18. While we look not at the things which are seen, 
But at the things which are not seen, or the things which are seen are temporal, but the things which are not seen are eternal. Exactly, man. So we're not looking at things that are seen. Because what we see, is it nice to have a car? Absolutely. Is it nice to have a, 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 a nice place to stay? Absolutely. No one here is against having a nice car or having a, a decent place to lay your head, man. But when you make that stuff your world, when you make it your absolute purpose is to get money, to get the best cars, to, 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 to smash the, the baddest bitches, guess what, man? You have a worldly mind. And to be carnally minded, ultimately, that's temporal, man. Because like I said earlier, this place is going to be destroyed, man. All right? We're not looking at the things that are seen, man. We're looking at the things that are not seen. And what are some of the things that are not seen, man? The chariots, man. Being able to, 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 to command your own chariot. Having your own planet. Having your own galaxy, man. Having your enemies in subjection. The so-called white men in subjection, man. Just like how he's had our people. All right, being able to enjoy your children, our women being in line. Those are the things that we cannot see right now. And those are the things that we're looking forward to, man. Reigning, being righteous, man. Not needing to, you know, uh, that, um, that, that carnal, that, that, that stone heart being taken away from us, man. Getting that fleshly heart. Where we're perfect, man, no death. These are things that we're looking forward to, man. These are things that are not seen man. and ultimately eternal, man. This is Hebrews 11 and 1. Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. Exactly, man. And that's the faith, man. Ultimately, you choosing a spiritual walk against a carnal walk shows your faith. Because faith is what? Faith is the evidence of things that are not seen. And we've, I've already listed a few of those things that are not seen, man. But that's what we're thriving for. We're enduring for those things that we can't see. All right? Being crowned by Yahweh Shai, man. Someone could get that in, uh, what's that, 2nd Ezra 2 and 50? Hold down and just hold it. You can get into that account, man. That's a beautiful prophecy. All right? That's what we're looking forward to, man. That's what we're looking forward to. We're looking forward to being crowned by Yahweh Shai, man. Who the world ignorantly calls Jesus Christ. Who FYI is a so-called black man, man. All right. Read it again. Chuck. All right. This is Hebrews 11, verse one. Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. Exactly, man. The evidence of things not seen. Ultimately, there's nothing in the world. If you don't have faith, I could sit up here and tell you all the things, man. The Lord talks about how He has many mansions. For his servants, man, I can tell you that you're gonna have everything in the world. But ultimately, if you don't have the faith in Yahweh Hashem Yahweh Shai, you don't have anything, man. You're not gonna believe. There's nothing. I can turn blue in the face and tell you all the things that the Lord is gonna give us. But if you don't have that faith, all right, you're done, man. Matter of fact, get that in the two and eight. It was like two and fifty, I believe, where he had the the bit. Okay, so I got it. I'll, I'll pull it. Up. I'll tell you right now. Bring out Ephesians 2 and 8. Ready? Yeah, come. This is Ephesians 2 and 8. For by grace are ye saved through faith, and that none of yourselves it is of the gift of the most high. Con, man. Ultimately, through grace we are saved, man. And this faith, this grace is a gift. All right? None of these men up here knew that they were going to be doing this, man. None of us knew that we were going to be doing this, man. If you were to ask me, Less, a few years ago, what I thought I was going to be doing, I can guarantee you, whatever I told you, it wasn't going to be this. We'll uh... Alright? But this is a gift. And that's why ultimately not everyone has the vision. Not everyone sees it. That's why men end up falling out and they get disenchanted, man. Because ultimately they didn't have that faith. They didn't have the vision. The Lord willing, the Lord continues to bless us up here, man, with that vision, man. Because the thing about the Lord is that He can have you up here. But he could take it from you too, man. That's why we need to constantly endure and constantly be better. And constantly do more for Yahweh Hashem Yahweh Shai. Or do as much as we can to the best of our ability, man. Because ultimately, none of us are saved up here yet, man. The apostles ain't saved. None of the brothers here saved, man. Because we still here. 
So it said that faith is a gift, man. So that, read it again. Um, Ephesians 2 and 8. For by grace are ye saved through faith, and not of yourselves. It is the gift of, of the Most High. Exactly, man. It's a gift. It's a gift of the Most High, man. Yeah, man, you know, this is, this is the gift of the Most High, man. Not everybody can receive faith, man. Because, you know, the, the typical Jake, they don't have faith in the scriptures, man. You know, they have faith in the so-called white man. You know, they believe in his philosophies and his way of living, man. You know, that's why every man can't understand the, 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 the prophecies, you know. Just like, just like God's wife, man. She didn't have faith when she turned back. She was, you know, reminiscing of all the wicked, you know, things they were doing in, 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 in Sodom and Gomorrah, man. You know, and that's why the Lord wants to be destroyed of this. He told her not to look back, and she looked back. She saw what? That she lacked faith, man. All right? Just like in the time, you forget, you can get um, Luke 17 real quick. You know, just like in the time of Noah, man, you know, it didn't rain, it never rained water from the heavens, you know, and people looked at Noah crazy, man. You know, Noah was out there prophesying 120 years, all right? And they was mocking, laughing at him, you know, with the, you know what Jake was doing, partying, you know, marrying, you know, just living their they, they, they best life, man, living wickedly, man, you know? Because they didn't have that faith, man. They didn't want to listen to no one, man. That's what ultimately what happened. The flood came, man, and wiped everybody away. You know? It's a new 17. Yeah, um, it's like around the 20th of the first. Yeah, it's a new 17. It's Romans 10 and 1. It says, Brethren, my heart, desire, and prayer to the Most High for Israel is that they might be saved. Yeah, so like the book is going into, you know, that's what we're, we're hoping for, man. Like the brother's going to faith is the gift of the most high. Okay? And none of us is saved yet. But what? We're, we're, we're hoping that we're saved. Okay? Yep. And that's why the scripture, Romans 8 24 says we are, that we are saved by hope. Yep. Okay? Yeah, that's right. So, you no, know, we out here on the highways of always teaching for what? For the hopes of Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shah, Bashim Yahweh saving us, delivering us out of this captivity and from this destruction to come. Yeah. You know, hey, but that's what we gotta constantly endure. Yeah. So we're not at the, we're we're getting close to the end, but we're not at the end yet. Yeah. Okay? Yeah. We just gotta keep fighting man, and hope and pray that the Lord will deliver us. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, that's what we're doing that right now, man. We're building that what? That spiritual arc. You know, hoping that the Lord, you know, we, we get exempt from that his judgment, man. That's right, you know? Yeah. Is, God, because uh, the judgment of the Lord it's gonna be harsh, man. Yep. The judgment of the Lord is gonna be is gonna be horrible. So we don't want no parts of that, man. The two thirds can have that. The heathen can have that. The so called white man can get that, man. We don't want no parts of what the Lord has to offer this place, man. In terms of judgment. Yep. All right. That's why we need to constantly endure, man. Yep. And like the brother said, we're getting close to the end. It's real easy, close to the end to get comfortable, man. Yeah. But to get complacent because, oh, you, you know, you, you start to, like, almost feel yourself, man. Yeah. Yeah. But guess what? We're here to tell you to not feel yourself. Yeah. Because, like I said earlier, man, just as easy as the Lord brought you in, He could scoop you out, man. So do not get comfortable in this thing, man. Yeah. Hey, and that's another thing, too, man. You know, that's why a lot of brothers fell out, man. Because they counted on the days of the Lord, man. Oh, yeah, we're going to give the Lord two years for him to come. You know, that's why you got to constantly endure, man. Keep praying without season, man. All right, because even the angels in Yahweh Shah don't know when the Lord is going to destroy this place, man. You know, it's, you know the angels is holding the four winds of the, of, of, of the earth, man. They're holding the destruction of this place, man. That's They're right. waiting on that call, you know. Yeah, I got the one ahead of us. All right, yeah, bring that out in that This is our second... This is 2 Ezra uh, 2, verse 42. It says, I, Ezra, saw upon the Mount Zion a great people whom I could not number. All right, so this is a vision, right? Because we're talking about things not seen. Because ultimately, that's what we're here for. We can't see anything of what the Lord said he promised he's going to give us, man. We can't see it. We're not in the kingdom right now. You know, we're still in these mortal bodies. But this is one of these things, man. This is one of these things. And Ezra saw it. So he said, what, Lord? Whom I could not number. He saw a great people that he could not number. 
That's talking about the elect, man. And they all praise the Lord with songs. Exactly, man. And they praise the Lord with songs, man. With praises, man. And in the midst of them, there was a young man of a high stature, taller than all the rest, and upon every one of their heads he set crowns and was more exalted, which I marveled at greatly. Exactly, man. So, in the midst of all these people, Ezra saw one young man who was taller than the rest, and he was great. But guess what? That man that was taller than the rest, what he was doing, he was crowning these many people. All right? That's something that we're looking forward to, man. That's the crowning. That's the coronation, man. That's the coronation of the elect, man. And that's what we're, that's one of the many things that we're looking forward to, man. Being crowned by our Lord and Savior, man. How about Shem Yahweh That's the coronation ceremony, man, as they would call it in the world. So I asked the angel and said, Sir, what are these? <clears throat> and so he answered and said unto me, These be they that have put off the mortal clothing and put on the immortal and have confessed the name of the power. Now are they crowned and receive psalms. God, man. So, hey, man. Ezra asked an angel, man, who are these guys? Who are these guys? And, and what's going on, basically? And he told them that these are the men who put off that mortal clothing. And what we were talking about earlier, man. To be carnally minded. Being, be, being carnally minded. All right? Putting your treasures into this world. Well, those men who were getting crowned by Yahweh Shai. All right? Those men that were there getting crowned were the elect, man. Those were the men who put away the world. They said, fuck the world, man. The world ain't got shit to offer me. They said, fuck the world, man. And they went and they followed the steps, the, in the footsteps of Yahweh Bashem, Yahweh Shai, man. Those are the men who were getting crowned in this scene. All right? Or... <clears throat> then, then said I unto the angel, what young person is it that crowned them and give it them palms in their hands. So he answered and said unto me, it is the son of the power whom they have confessed in the world. Then began I greatly to commend them that stood so stiffly for the name of the Lord. Hey man, and that, that's a heavy, that, that's heavy right there man. So he asked him, who is this man? Who is this tall young man? All right, because the tall young man, he wasn't only tall, but he was great. And Ezra asked the angel, he said, who is this man? And he told him, that's the son of Yahweh. All right, that's Yahweh Shai right there. Giving them those crowns and giving them the palms to their hands. All right? And what made this man, what made these men special is not only that they put off that mortal clothing, but also is that they confess the name of Yahweh Hashem Yahweh Shai, the true name, not Jesus Christ, not God, all right, but Yahweh Hashem Yahweh Shai, Yahweh meaning He is, man, all right, and Yahweh Shai meaning He delivered, all right, because ultimately anyone can read this scripture and say and think that they're going to receive this, but the Lord's name has only been given to certain people, man. And only certain people know what the Lord's real name is, man. And ultimately, it goes back to that name in the Hebrew, man. Yahweh Ba'ashem Yahweh Shai, man. So those men who stood for that name, all right, that's not a name you hear commonly. If it was that simple, then everybody would be saved, man, because everybody uses so-called Jesus. Even people who aren't Christians use Jesus. Does that mean they get a pass? Does that mean they're going to be crowned? and be given palms? No, man. These are the men who stood stiply for that name of the Yahweh Bashi, Yahweh Shai, man. All right? Real quick. Uh, Matthew 19 and 20, 27. Then, Peter, then answered Peter and said unto him, Behold, we have the sick and all that follow me. What shall, what shall we have therefore? 
and Yahweh Shah said unto to them, Verily I say unto you, that ye which follow ye which have followed me in the regeneration, when the Son of Man shall sit in the throne of his glory, he also shall sit upon twelve thrones, judging the twelve tribes of Israel. Exactly, man. So hey man, the the, the, the disciples asked Yahweh Shai, who the world didn't really call Jesus, man. And they asked him, okay, we've let go of everything, man. We've let go of everything to follow you. What do we get in return? And his answer to them was in the regeneration, all right? Meaning in the next life, all right? Because the scriptures do go into reincarnation. He said in the next life, all right, when I'm in my power seat, you will be there with me ju judging the tribes, man. All right, and that's an honor. That's why he was crowning these men in 2nd Ezra, man. That's why that vision came. All right, because in order for you to judge, you need to be in a position of high power, man. So that scene in 2nd Ezra is the Lord, Yahweh Shai, giving us that power, man, giving us the crown. That's why we put away the mortal clothing, man. Cut. Um, back in Second Ezra 2, uh, 2 and verse 48, Then the angel said unto me, Go thy way, and tell my people what manner of things and how great wonders of the Lord that power thou hast, thou hast seen. Exactly, man. And then, after showing Ezra that, because you already know, Hey man, the Lord does everything in spectacular manner, man. So you already know that when Ezra had this vision, Ezra probably thought he was actually there, man. Because the Lord does everything in spectacular fashion, man. Which means that he probably felt the noise of all those people there. Because remember, he said it was a multitude of people, right? So, you know, in a multitude of people, you hear the clamor. You hear people, you know, you hear, there's just, um, there's an energy to a large group of people being grow, um, being grouped together. So he probably felt that energy. He probably smelled what it smelled like. And after showing Ezra such a beautiful prophecy, uh, such a beautiful vision, I should say, the angel sent Ezra back and said, tell my people this, man. And ultimately, through the Spirit, that's exactly what we're doing here, man. We're telling you that this is what you could potentially get, man. This is the importance of praising and looking for Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai, man. Because this is something that you have to look forward to, man. And I'm talking to you so-called Negroes, Latinos, Native Americans, and the people that descend from them, man. This is what you have to look forward to. All right? The, the, the elder brother brought out that scripture. So like it. The elder brother brought out that scripture. They said that you were going to be a judge with Yahweh Shai, man. Bring out that scripture, I don't know where it is, where it says, you know, joint to be joint heirs with the Aosha. That's a bad Yeah, it's a bad so. But yeah, man. We're here to tell you that, man. Just like how the angel told Ezra at Ezra's, we're telling you, man. Okay. Okay. Romans. Romans 8. Verse 17. It says. And if children, then hears, hears of the power. I'm not selecting you. Start at 16. Romans 8 and 16. The spirit itself bear witness with our spirit, but we are the children of the power. Exactly, man. The spirit bear witness with us, man. All right? Like I was saying earlier, this isn't something that we chose. This isn't something that you go and you, and you bring a deposit. And, and, and you bring an application and then they send it to HR. No, man. So the spirit bear of witness with us, man. We were learning. Every brother pretty much has, I mean, and any newer brother has pretty much the same story, man. You cruising on YouTube, probably looking at conspiracy theory videos and somehow you end up watching, learning something about the Israelites. No matter the camp, all right? But guess what? Something resonated with us, man. And something has resonated with the apostles, even from, from, from the apostles and their apostles and their elders, man. All right? And what, what is that that has resonated with them? Is that their spirit, it bears witness, man. There's something about this truth 
that when you hear it, you almost get drawn into it, man. And it's nothing that anyone can explain. That's why I said the spirit bear witness that we are the children of Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai. Because ultimately, we don't know. But guess what? We feel it, man. Khan, exactly. So this is all just, you know, us being in the party and you feeling our lives, you know? That's right. That's right, man. Uh, quick reset, as you mentioned, this isn't something that we chose. Um, This is Jeremiah 1 and 5. It says, Before I formed thee in the belly, I knew thee. And before thou comest forth out of the womb, I sanctify thee and ordain thee a prophet unto the nation. So, yeah, so, so, so before your mom and dad even got together to, uh, you know, do what they do, the Lord already knew you. You was, you was already in the spirit world. So when your parents, so, so when your physical parents got together, the Lord was like, all right, this spirit, it's, it's time for you to, you know, it's time for you to uh, uh, um, 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 go down, man. Okay? And he put the spirit in your mother's womb. And from in the womb, you was already um, ordained and commanded to, once you live a certain amount of um, um, life on this earth, you was going to um, do the work and be a prophet. That's right. Like, our parents didn't say, you know what, let's get together and make a baby. You're going to be a prophet. Son, when you grow up, you're going to be a prophet. No, nah, man. Our parents was being worldly. They did what they did. We was out in the world. And it just came to that point in time when, uh, you know, the Lord just woke us right up and said, hey, listen, man. I'm waking you up. Now you got to go out and do my will, man. That's right. That's right. This is John 15 and 16. Ye have not chosen me, but I have chosen you and ordained you that ye shall go and bring forth fruit, and that your fruit shall remain, that whatsoever ye shall ask of the Father in my name, he may give it to you. Gave it, give it, give it you. You know, and ye, the Lord, we didn't choose the Lord, man. We didn't choose your how about Shia and Shah, man. Yeah, right. the Lord chose us. The Lord chose us, man. All right, the Lord chose us to, to do this work and bring forth fruit, man. To, you know, to feed the Lord's sheep of Israel, man. To wake up as a light, man. All right? So he could come and, and establish his righteousness, man. And destroy this place, which is Babylon the Great, man. All right? That's our, our duty of a man, man. All right? To come out in these highways and byways, man. And prophesy. All right? And wake up these so-called Negroes, Latinos, and Native Americans. That's right. Okay, that's our job. That's right. Read that again. Oh, Salakia. Read that again. Because it's a big point here. Yeah. This is John 15 and 16. He have not chosen me, but I have chosen you. A lot of people, right, think that they choose the Lord, man. A lot of people think they choose the Lord, man, especially you women out there, man. Oh, you choose to be with Jesus now. After you all done up, you all ran through. You done done every manner of wickedness in the world. Now you choosing the Lord, man. No. The Lord chooses you. And obviously, if you're doing all that wickedness, then you're not chosen, man. It's that simple. All right? What do the scriptures say? Do not the scriptures say, come at me in your youth? Most people who dedicate or who choose Jesus or whatever, it's always in their old age, man. You know? These are young men up here, man. And, and the men who are older, all right, they have been here since they were since they were young, all right? And absolutely, every now and then, the Lord's going to bring someone who's older, and, and amen, the Lord has his ways. But for the most part, the Lord deals with young men. Why? Because a young man, his, his ultimate, uh, or, or his, his spiritual power, let's say, is his strength, man. A young man has strength. That's his strength, man. What's the strength? The strength and the will to come out here, man. When you're a young man, usually you got no kids. You don't really pay bills. So what? You can dedicate yourself fully to Yahweh Hashem, Yahweh Shai. That's why the Lord deals with, young, deals with young men when they're early. That's why it says to seek ye the Lord early, man. Because as you get older, you get more set in your ways. You get more bad habits. A young man, not only is he strong, and he's gonna be on fire, but on top of that, it's like a clean slate, man. They haven't had all the wickedness of the world imprinted on them, all right? I started learning about this when I was um, 19 years old, man. 19, and brothers can, you know, brothers can 
brothers all over, man. There's brothers here that is 20 years old. You know? That's what the Lord deals with, man. So read that again. All right, this is John 15 and 16. He hath not chosen me, and this is Yahweh Shah talking, it's written in red letter. Okay. He hath not chosen me, but I have chosen you and ordained you that ye shall go and bring forth fruit. Exactly. And that your fruit shall remain, that whatsoever ye shall ask of the Father in my name, he may give it to you. Exactly, man, because ultimately this is transactionary, man. This is a transaction between the Lord and his men. All right? It's not that the Lord's going to choose you to do his work and you just going to be vibing. Oh, yeah, you know, I'm in the truth. That's it. No, the idea of you being in the truth is that you also become a fisher and you bring in fish, man. You become a fisherman, man. And you bring in that fish. You bring in that fruit. And how do we bring in the fruit? Out here speaking, man. Whether someone's walking by, all right? Whether someone's walking by or someone sees this video. And, it, and, and, and then, just like it did to us, it resonates with their spirit, man. That's what it's about, man. That's why the Lord needs to choose you, man. Hold on. Four and three. But if our gospel be hid, it is hid to them that are lost. Right? And, and you know, if this gospel, because you know, you can't, you know, you try to preach this gospel, you know, to everybody, to Jake, you know? But it's hid to them that are lost, because a lot of our people are spiritually dead, man. Uh, a lot of our people, their lot is to be destroyed. Their lot is not to understand the truth, man. All right? It says, in whom the most high of this world have blinded the minds of them which believe not. Yeah, the Lord has has his angels that's, that's blinding your minds, man, for you not to understand the truth, man. That's right. All right? He's sending his angels. It's an angel for you not to okay, see okay. this part, man, for you not to get the understanding of the scriptures, man. All right? Only, only a, the elect is going to know the true understanding of the scriptures, man, and even get the true understanding of the Lord, man, because our people don't really know what the Lord is. Don't right. even know the Lord's name, man. Huh. You know, our people is idol worshiping these other gods, man. They call these other gods Jesus, you know, Allah, Buddha. All right, they're blind, man. They're spiritually yeah, dead, man. All right. Um, I'm gonna continue. It says, uh, Second Corinthians four and four, in whom the most high of this world have blinded the minds of them which believe not, lest the light of the glorious gospel of Yahweh Shah Mashiach. Who is the image of 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 the Most High to shine unto them? You know, and he well, he should he shed that light to who is a light, man. All right, so you should be, you know, and Lord willing, we that number, we the hopeful elect, man. You better be happy that the Lord chose you to do this work, man. All right, because it's the best, it's the best job you could have, man, is to serve the Lord, man. All right, That's right. because we know, man, we we we, we seeking for salvation, man. We seeking for us not to be a part of, you know, getting caught up in those. You know, in Jacob's supper, man, you know, we want the Lord to deliver us, man. We want the Lord to know, make a way for us in, in those times, man. All right? right. Read that again with the Bishop. Khan, this is 2 Corinthians 4 and 4. In whom the most high of this world have blinded the minds of them which believe not. All right, so the Lord, ultimately, like the brother was saying, he blinded them. Yeah. All right, go on. Lest the light of the glorious gospel of Mashiach, who is the image of the most high, should shine unto them. Exactly, and then it said the light. Yeah. All right, but if you're blind, you can't see the light. Yeah. All right? That's that little detail there, man. Yeah. If you're blind, you can't see the light. But what's the light of Yahweh Shem Yahweh Shai? These scriptures, man.